We have an update for you from the past few days. We were making good progress across the Atlantic when we started taking on some water. This affected the electrical system, meaning we couldn't run the basic systems on the boat which were necessary for the safety of the crew. We felt the safe and sensible thing was to go to the nearest port, which was 300 nautical miles north to the Azores, where we are now. These are basic teething issues because it's a new boat. We have technicians on board trying to fix things, and we hope to be back on our way to Granada within the next few days. This is the Sailing World on Water, January 15, 2022. These are our highlights in the sport of sailing in the last seven days. As we have prepared this report Giovanni Soldini and his team have pushed their damaged boat across the finishing line first, in the IORC transatlantic race for 2022. It was very close from power play in Argo. Now we have the latest report in from the IORC dated January 14. In the latest INEO's moving parts video, James Allison their chief technical officer is profiled. Meanwhile the on-water action in Australia is at Sail Melbourne where we have the day one highlights. Melbourne produced a 32 degree day, with 20 knots of shifty easterly breeze to keep the sailors happy. Jeremy Bayow has had a very challenging year this year, and he is looking at building a new iMocha for the 2024 Vendee Globe. Let's hope it's as exciting as his current boat. The Melge's 15 winter series got off to a great start with 60 boats registered. The registration more than doubled since 2021 with new owners, early advocates, and teams of all ages. Congratulations to Eddie Cox and Molly Ziegler. The 15 is, Sailing Worlds, Boat of the Year. In what we hope will become a regular feature leading up to the 37th America's Cup, we have the latest from Mr. America's Cup, Sailing Illustrated's, Tom Ehrman. Tom has the inside ear on what is happening and he will share it with us here on The World on Water. Now back to multi-hole mayhem. They're coming in hot, in the day 7 ROC Transat race report. Here is the report dated the 14th of January 2022. On the morning of the 7th day of the ROC Transatlantic race, news in from Power Play, and Argo, confirms they are in sight of each other. 500 miles from the finish. At dawn in Grenada on Saturday the 15th of January, a grandstand multi-hull finish is expected at Camper and Nicholson's Port Louis Marina. The wounded beast Maserati is in third. Comanche is under 900 miles from Grenada and odds on for a new monohull race record. L4 Trifork, Phosphorus 2, and Jangada, are estimated to be leading their IRC classes and news in from the Volvo 60 Challenge Ocean, pushing as hard as anyone. Peter Cunningham's MOD 70 power play, still leads by a hair's breadth for multi-hull line honours. Jason Carroll's MOD 70, Argo, has come within half a mile of crossing power play. It has been revealed that Giovanni Soldini's multi-70, Maserati, has lost the ability to fully foil, having damaged, then lost, their port rudder. Argo also has port rudder damage. All three trimarans are in a high-speed pursuit of the finish, coming in hot at over 30 knots of boat speed. Powerplay's Paul Lesson contacted the ROC media team at 0900 UTC on day 7. He said that due to the carbon fiber sales on Powerplay they have no tracker data on Port Jibe and didn't see Argo, or Maserati coming, until they were visual from deck. Argo came in hot from the east, and we managed to cross them by about half a mile. Tom Dawson and Giles Scott went to work with Miles Seddon and the decision was made to jibe with them. We're one reef in, and constantly in the 30s boat speed. On starboard jibe we got comms, and quickly checked our position. As it stands it looks like we'll cross Maserati as well. We've effectively got a new race start now with around 500 miles to go. Everyone's pumped and power play is at 100%. This has already been a belter of a race. Looking like it's going to be like that all the way to the end. 
The blue bus is still the hunted, but the hounds are all around. In the IRC Super Zero Division, the 100-foot Comanche, skippered by Mitch Booth, is 868 miles from the finish at 0900 UTC, on the 14th of January. Comanche is expected to finish the race around dawn on Monday the 17th of January. Comanche is odds-on for the double of monohull race record, and the IMA trophy, for monohull line honours, and at 1200 UTC, will Oxley reported in. All well on board the mighty Comanche. We managed to negotiate the light air ridge on the 13th and are now steaming towards Grenada in great trade wind sailing conditions. The sweepstake for finish times is underway with the biggest losers having a rather large bar bill. After IRC time correction, Volvo 70 LF Trifork with Joan Lesson at the helm is estimated to be leading IRC Super Zero. Comanche is ranked second, with Volvo 70 I Love Poland third. On checking the latest positions on the tracker, it shows Maserati in the lead, from Power Play, and Argo third. What a great finish. I studied engineering at university because I was okay at maths and physics and I wanted to be an engineer. I loved engineering at university, but I wanted a form of engineering that would be fast moving and challenging and be a really strong team environment. So it was fairly natural for me to seek a form of it that was a sporting based engineering challenge. And being a big fan of F1 as a boy, uh, that was where I first sought my career and I joined straight from university and have done nothing else since until this venture. Coming into this world as someone familiar with Formula One, it's quite dizzying how much the design space is broad and unexplored compared with F1. In F1 we have rule changes year to year, but the changes are actually quite small compared to America's Cup where the campaigns are sort of three, four years apart the space that you need to explore, the number of variables that, that are there in the design challenge, really large. And we would be completely lost if it weren't for the fact that this team has a broad range of very seasoned America's Cup engineers who are able to sort of guide the team through that design space, only spending the effort in the areas that are likely to give us performance on the boat. I have just spent the last 24 hours in this wonderful place, the Royal Yacht Squadron here, with history and tradition flowing out of every pore of this building. Um, but it was pretty clear that there is, there is a sort of weeping sore uh, in that building, and that is that the America's Cup has never actually sat there, held by this yacht club, and that it would be an enormous deal if it were bought here. And I know from my perspective that it will feel absolutely fantastic because I can see already how, how tough it is, how hard it will be for us to get everything right on time. But I also am thrilled by the prospect of doing so and looking forward to playing my part and putting my shoulder to that wheel along with all my colleagues to try and get everything right so that we can bring that cup here and, uh, and place it uh, in the building alongside all the other history and tradition of this building and, uh, and I think that will be just a fantastic experience for all of us. Here on uh, day one of Sale Melbourne, just moved into the 470. Yeah, it should be a great day of racing, good competition. Got Nia here, got Chris here, and their crew, so yeah, it's gonna be really good.
Je vais quand même être obligé d'y retourner quoi. <rire> bon, heureusement c'est dans 4 ans. Hein. Et bah ben donc euh, 2024. <rire> On a envie de prolonger l'histoire et justement on va parler de la suite. Notre histoire commune sur le vent des globes ne peut pas se terminer comme ça. Nous allons construire un nouveau bateau, donc Charal 2. D'avoir un bateau qui soit capable de monter les mers en Strong conditions here for the start of the Rolex Fastnet race 2021. This is going to be really, really close competition. Maga 15 winning boat of the year is so well deserved. I am ecstatic and so happy for them and congratulations. It's, it's unlike any other boat, it's just, it's so smooth. I just, I, I can't explain it any easier. It's just an easy boat to sail. It's the adrenaline. Yeah. It, you just can't get away when from that. When you get going downwind with the shoot up, like it is exhilarating. The favorite part about racing these boats is uh, camaraderie. Uh, you know, it's good to have kind of that fixed event to go play with my friends. And I wasn't at all surprised to see the announcement. I thought for sure that that was coming and that was going to happen. It's a great boat. It works for everybody. Men, women, old, young. Um, it's easy Family. to travel. Families. Family fun.
Here is our 37th America's Cup report, from Tom Amon, Mr. America's Cup, of Sailing Illustrated, and the head of many previous America's Cup campaigns. Uh, the America's Cup, the American Cup boat race, uh, we told you about New York Yacht Club American Magic, are back, we told you that on Friday. And not much has happened that I've heard in the meantime. There have been a lot of chatter, a lot of ratchet jawing, as we used to say growing up. And I told you that New York Yacht Club issued this release just before we went to air on Friday, in case you missed it or joined us later in the show. Didn't watch a replay earlier this week, meaning last week. The trustees in New York approved a challenge for the 37th edition of Sailing's Most Prestigious Trophy. Quote, we are extremely excited to continue our request, our quest to regain the America's Cup with American Magic, says the new Commodore, Paul M. Zabatakis, who's a doctor, Commodore of the New York Yacht Club. He just became Commodore in December. And this is an interesting quote. I'm going to repeat it from Friday. Upon receiving the protocol for the 37th match, we were pleased to find that it contains elements advocated for by the club last spring. In addition, the executive committee recently received a new proposal from Doug DeVos and Hap Fouth, American Magic principals and club members, that warranted reconsideration of our earlier decision to pause our pursuit for AC 37. That was the guts of the statement, the, the opening paragraph or so. Photo from down in Auckland of the team celebrating. Um, I don't know when that was, but a nice photo. And then, of course, at the same time, a few five minutes later, American Magic issued a release as well, saying they're pleased to confirm that it intends to compete. And I won't read more than that because it's, it's, uh, we read it on Friday and, and it's surplusage really at this point, repeating. But it, the interesting thing is that a lot of you came away and maybe I gave that impression that New York had filed a challenge. Yeah. And they haven't. They have stated both in their release and in the uh, yeah. in the American Magic release, their intention yes. to challenge, and one hears that they're still looking at a lot of things. Can they come up with a box? Can they do they like the venue because they don't know for sure the venue? Yeah, how can you? You can't do that to you know the venue. Well, the other teams have they file challenges, but maybe they're willing to put a million bucks up, and if the cha- they don't like what's going on, they pull out. Maybe they've got a deal that says if we don't like what comes down the pike from the RNZYS, mm-hmm. well, New Zealand Yacht Squadron and ETNZ as to venue, that they've got a deal that says they can somehow pull out. We mm-hmm. don't know about that. We'll, we'll see. So that was the news. Now, as, as I said, been a lot of chatter uh, and some responsible press reports. This from Mark Jardine in sale-world.com saying this about New York and the about face. America's Cup land never fails to deliver on drama in the past week, saw plenty of it as American Magic confirmed their intention to compete in the 37th America's Cup representing the New York Yacht Club. Now, again, folks, you can say that and you can accuse me of wearing a blue blazer and being a yacht club guy, but it's the club that challenges with a representative team. Mm -hmm. And you can say, well, the club won't challenge unless they have a team, but it's the New York Yacht Club that confirmed their intention to compete. And it's an intention. Mark's got this. Mark Jardine's got this right. On the face of it, and without knowing the backstory, this would seem like simple continuity. Good point. The team represented New York Yacht Club in the 36th edition, but nothing is ever quite that simple when it comes to the old mug, maybe as as in life. Back in July, it was announced that Stars Plus Stripes would represent the New York Yacht Club in AC 37, with then New York Yacht Club Commodore Chris Culver saying, quote, our challenge for the 37th America's Cup will incorporate the experience gained during the previous edition of the American Magic into the foundation of an enduring syndicate. Our syndicate, meaning Stars Plus Stripes, will showcase American talent and ingenuity, seek significant corporate support, and create a leadership brand that can lift American sailing back to the top of the sport for generations to come. Hmm. Mm. So, as I guess you know, we've reported it on this show for the last couple of months that after that happened, a few weeks after that happened, Commodore Chris Culver, who was in his first year of what normally is a two-year term, it's two one-year terms, he's got to be renominated and reelected in December. Well, he, he he's seen here in the middle of this photo at the annual prize giving, which is also in December, a black tie event, fabulous proper event at, Har- at Harbor Court at, at 44th Street in New York. 
Taylor Canfield there on the left, along with Commodore Culver and Mike Buckley on the right, Taylor and Mike were awarded jointly the Mossbacker Award, which is the club's preeminent yacht racing performance of the year uh, uh, award, which raised a few eyebrows. And I don't know if Chris ran that by Commodore Culver, as I would properly say, if he ran that past everybody involved or the executive or the board or it got rubber stamped, but it did raise a lot of eyebrows. Taylor and Mike are both members of the club. I know from a couple of you who are on here that Taylor is not amused with me because I've been critical of them for what they did to Long Beach Yacht Club last time. And I will continue. I don't think it's Taylor. I think it was Mike who's been the CEO and the leader and, the, and, and Taylor's the sailor. And Taylor's a hell of a, you know, both of them are great sailors. But this was strange, especially when we knew that uh, Commodore Culver was not being renominated and, and was not going to be Commodore this year. So there's, I'm not going to get into all the dirty laundry of, of which I've heard. I love this club joined in 1981, but I know that Commodore Culver was not amused. He got through the year with, uh, with dignity and style and grace, but this was his home. Some of you asked, well, what is that thing that I put on my co Facebook cover photo? That is his beautiful home, was his beautiful home just next door to Harbor Core. That's the Newport Bridge in the background. And he sold the house, made a few bucks, apparently. We saw the listing price before and after. Won't bore you with that. But one also hears that he has taken his New York, he's a great sailor, Chris Culver, and he's won a lot of trophies. One hears that he's taken his trophies that he won down to a, a, a antique shop in Newport, Rhode Island. Yes, Julie, you're looking surprised. Really? One hears these things, you know. And he took his trophies down to an antique shop in downtown Newport. Uh, Newport. I've heard this from several sources. And those trophies are there for sale. Uh oh. Because he's just not amused with what's going on. He was going to go with Stars Plus Stripes and the club nominating committee and some others said, powers that be, said, no, not going to happen. He sold his house. He's <laughs> selling his trophies. Oh. And it's sad, right? Yes. Too soon. Well, Tom, here's breaking news. The mayor of the Spanish port city of Malaga has confirmed that they are keen on hosting the next America's Cup. Malaga mayor, Francisco de la Torre, broke his silence on the discreet bid confirming that since October, the administration had been assessing the viability of staging yachting's pinnacle event. This was reported today in New Zealand media.